These are the transits that we're talking about today, this triple conjunction of Pluto, Jupiter, Saturn. Many of you are aware that Jupiter, Saturn will conjoin in the very beginning of Aquarius on the uh, winter solstice. That's quite interesting. Jupiter and Saturn will also be, of course, in square with Uranus, Jupiter for most of next year and uh, Saturn uh, for several years. And, and then for uh, since August, Mars has also been in square with this Pluto, Jupiter, Saturn, just grinding in its message, to use a, a term from Rick, really enhancing the sense of uh, bitterness, acrimony, harsh confrontation, the sort of grinding wheels of power and conflict. And that'll be nice when that's over, but it certainly has uh, made this election season very interesting. Now, Stan Groff conducted over 3,000 um, LSD sessions, and out of that data, he extrapolated what he calls an expanded cartography of the human psyche. He understood that the psyche consists of three broad domains, the biographical from infancy to the present, the perinatal, which is about the human confrontation with death and also memories from birth, and then broad realm of experience, the transpersonal realms. He, he coined that term transpersonal. Here's a more extended look at that same map with the, the biographical realm, the perinatal, and the transpersonal realms. This is quite a remarkable schema. Um, those of you who want to come back to have a look at it, you might find it uh, pretty fascinating. This is in Groff's The Way of the Psychonaut. So uh, at the perinatal layer, Groff found that experiences tend to emerge in four somewhat distinct clusters of experience. The first one is based on the intrauterine situation. In an ideal situation, this would be overlayered with images of heaven and paradise. No boundaries. The, the ego, the separate ego, has not yet been formed. There's a sense of unity with the mother's body biologically and spiritually and with the entire cosmos. The second perinatal matrix is based on the beginning of the contractions with the cervix still closed and sort of no exit, compression and constriction. The third perinatal matrix or, or BPM, basic perinatal matrix, is based on the long slow propulsion down the birth canal with the cervix now open. And then BPM-4 is based on the crowning and explosive liberation as the infant exits the life-threatening birth canal and becomes an autonomous uh, biological organism. Rick was able to make the correlation between these four perinatal matrices with the uh, long-observed meaning of the planets Neptune, Saturn, Pluto, and Uranus. And, and for my, my three presentations today, I'm going to look at Saturn, then Pluto, then Uranus. So this is a hour and a half talk squeezed into 21 minutes. So BPM2, the, the cervix is still closed. There's a sense of compression and contraction, but no exit. Uh, feelings of constriction, hopelessness, helplessness, very powerful root of uh, clinical depression, uh, lack of meaning or a meaningful connection with the universe. This can often be depicted at the onset as as being engulfed in a, a whirlpool descent into the maelstrom. This is from a, an LSD session. Uh, the artist H.R. Giger was born with Pluto, square, Mars, Saturn, very similar to the world transits right now. And many of you could relate to the feelings in this uh, painting. Uh, the perinatal themes of an intense compression and suffering. Uh, another Giger. And then my colleague Olina Proventure in San Francisco drew this really interesting uh, drawing of uh, John Paul Sartre in the no exit stage of birth. We know that Sartre had a poorly managed and unresolved mescaline session during his Saturn return. So transiting Saturn was conjunct his natal moon Saturn conjunction. And he ended with feelings of depression, hopelessness, a sense of guilt, the absurdity of life, um, and this became a very powerful influence on his w entire life philosophy from that point on and the, the development of existentialism in the 20th century. Now, I want to talk about perinatal themes engaged by the COVID-19 pandemic. Saturn BPM2, so feelings of fear, helplessness and victimization, sense of compression, 
uh, feeling stuck in a holding pattern, isolation and enforced boundaries, uh, seeing the other as dangerous or hostile. Uh, COVID restrictions remind many people of this uh, state of constriction during labor and exacerbate their feelings of depression. And many people are resistant uh, to these, you know, not unreasonable uh, restrictions in order to, to protect our, our, our wise elders and seniors and people with pre-existing conditions because it reminds them of this much more fundamental threat. In conspiracy theories that are floated around now, feelings of oppression by those in authority, vaccines as a form of control or domination, a vast conspiracy to steal our autonomy and freedom. And I believe that people are projecting onto the medical experts these kind of perinatal memories of being constricted. Now, uh, perinatal themes engaged by the Trump presidency and election. Now, this is a pretty uh, <laughs> a wild uh, and rich, fertile area. So everyone is feeling tremendous anxiety, a fear of engagement, fear of loss of freedom. Liberal people are afraid of sort of a Trump dictatorship uh, attempts to steal the election and create a kind of a dictatorship. People uh, with right-wing leanings are also afraid of, of these Saturnian memories and, and they've sort of projected on uh, communism and imagine that some kind of communist or socialist agenda will take away their freedom. Now, from a liberal perspective, this an alarming brush with totalitarianism right now. Uh, Trump as a self-serving tyrant and manipulator. Um, you know, Pluto intensifying right now the Saturn archetype that Becca was talking about. Also, in a more ongoing way, a threat to abortion rights, uh, forcing people to give birth. I believe that, that, you know, there are perinatal elements in, in that debate as well. Now, from a conservative perspective, Trump's projection of strength uh, are seen as is seen as an admirable virtue, a necessary hardening of defensive boundaries. There's a great fear of change among people on the right wing, fear of loss of freedom in socialism or communism, as I mentioned. This is from a, a BPM2 sequence in an LSD session uh, where the uh, uterine contractions are depicted as an attack by a monstrous octopus. And we can see this in the kind of uh, sort of propaganda or, or uh, political cartoons during this period. This is a fairly recent one where the government is portrayed as this monstrous octopus stealing people's freedom and, and uh, torturing them and so on. Um, this is a kind of a pro-Trump uh, cartoon. And here's Donald Trump as the man of steel, a term Rick often used that at Pluto Saturn periods often correspond to hardening of boundaries, a sense of armoring and defensiveness. He's impervious to all criticism or all feedback, and they would see this as a, a positive virtue, people on, on the far right. And then this is a great cartoon from Angry White Menistan, uh, where you see the intensified boundaries and uh, you know all the things that they want to keep out. But I believe that these perinatal memories are underlying that fear of change. Yeah, um, I'll talk more, more about that. So on the positive side, during these transits, we can discover a deep capacity to persevere and endure difficult situations. This is a time of forced introspection, a reset of our basic priorities and life strategy. This is the positive side of Saturn. But many people don't want introspection and they resent it and it, it can be experienced as a negative force uh, for them. So the important thing to remember about these perinatal matrices is the core of them really is the archetypal dimension. These elements of heaven and paradise, um, hellish constriction, purgatorial drive toward the light and then ecstatic liberation and reunion. The, the obstetric, in, in a sense, is a subset within that. We're not reducing these perinatal matrices to, to just memories that happened uh, during birth. They, the archetypal transpersonal component is, is the more important part of it. So Pluto, uh, confrontations with the shadow side of human nature, intense driving pressures and activation of powerful energies in this dynamic stage of birth labor. The cervix is now open. The frail head of the fetus is, is jammed into the narrow pelvic opening by very powerful 
uh, pressures, uh, contractions, a sense of there being a finite amount of suffering, uh, feelings of moving toward light at the end of the tunnel, as opposed to Saturnian suffering, which can feel uh, endless and inescapable with Pluto, you have a sense that you will eventually get out. Uh, this, this was the, again, the correlation that uh, Rick made with Stan's work. So in this dynamic stage of the death-rebirth struggle connected with Pluto, uh, one of the important compo components is activation of aggression, a sense of titanic fight. And we're certainly seeing that in the culture wars right now. I'll be looking at that more specifically activation of Dionysian and sexual energies, which because of the suffocation in labor tend to have a sadomasochistic component. It's interesting that the Marquis de Sade was born with a Venus Mars Pluto in T-square and Venus Saturn square Mars. We need to remember that that was just one of the expressions of these energies. Many people with these same alignments will uh, manifest them in uh, different ways or more responsible ways. People can uh, confront the problem of evil and the relationship between good and evil. And this is certainly, a, a lot of this is being projected uh, between different human groups right now in the culture wars. Uh, these sequences deepen into confrontations with negative archetypal energies or wrathful deities, as the Buddhists call them. Groff calls this the demonic. Again, Giger was born with Pluto square Mars Saturn, an uncanny capacity to depict the, the nightmarish world of, of the perinatal matrices. Another theme that emerges um, is the scatological. In sessions, people can experience tremendous nausea. Projectile vomiting is a frequent occurrence. There's a finite amount of this in the psyche. Croft was able to prove and so it's very beneficial in deep self-exploration to allow this nausea to surface. Um, and then finally, uh, pyrocatharsis, um, a sense of passing through purifying fire that can uh, purify everything that is rotten and corrupt in our souls and prepare our souls for rebirth. This is from an ayahuasca session with, with transiting Pluto conjunct her natal sun three great videos that depict all of the elements of BPM3, or many of them, uh, are Madonna's spectacular Like a Prayer from uh, 89. She had transiting Pluto lighting up her Uranus sun and opposition her natal Mars. Uh, very powerful uh, artistic uh, piece. This, that same year, Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire, which I believe was the number one song in 1989. He had very similar transits of Pluto opposition his Sun Mars and square his natal Pluto. So essentially Pluto, Sun Mars, same as Madonna. And then Lady Gaga's Bad Romance, one of the most emblematic videos of this recent Uranus Pluto square, um, very popular. And she had transiting Pluto uh, conjunct her natal Mars and square her natal Sun. Sun in Aries square, Mars in Capricorn natally um, and lit up by transiting Pluto. This video is like a textbook uh, illustration of Groff's BPM3. If you haven't seen it, I'd recommend uh, checking it out. And then a great expression of BPM3 in the arts is uh, Picasso's Guernica. Uh, Pluto square is natal Sun when he drew this uh, paradigmatic expression of the uh, you know breakdown of structures of the 20th century the horrors unleashed in the world wars and this was uh, in this was specifically the Luftwaffe bombing of Guernica now perinatal themes engaged by the COVID-19 pandemic uh, in March especially the sense of apocalyptic danger an intensification of the culture war so now we're looking at Pluto BPM3 here there was an interesting scatological element some of you may have thought of this the run on toilet paper in the early days of the lockdown it was like the shit was hitting the fan and people just thought if they only had toilet paper they were going to be able to make make it through all right now, from a liberal and a medical perspective, the dangerous behavior of not wearing masks at large rallies, uh, uh, often referred to as Trump's death cult, inflexible economic considerations and a willingness to sacrifice the lives of others, such as seniors and those with pre-existing conditions, rather than threaten economic gain. Groff talks a lot about BPM3, a very powerful root of, of the two main human problems facing our species. Uh, aggression 
and also um, insatiable greed. And um, maybe in the next webinar, I can sort of unpack that a little more. So uh, very difficult choices. Um, you know, it's horrible to see people losing their businesses and it's just a very difficult time. Um, hard times as uh, people talked about the, the Saturn, Uranus, Pluto, T-square and the Great Depression of, of the uh, 29 to 33. You know, the wearing of masks and, and physical distancing could have greatly mitigated these problems. So unfortunately, the, the US in particular is getting this in a very difficult uh, magnitude. Someone online uh, wrote this, Carmen sent this to me, my girlfriend. If you're refusing to wear a mask due to concerns that your brain won't get enough oxygen, it's pretty clear that ship has sailed. Um, <laughs> now from a conspiracy, conspiracy theories and far right perspective, enforced mask wearing is a form of domination and acknowledgement of weakness, a reminder of perinatal choking. People have this fear of choking. And this is, for many people, Groff found this is the most important meta trauma in their lives was the choking, sometimes being brought to the edge of death during the birth process. Anything that reminds us of that choking, uh, we will tend to react against in a, in a very, uh, you know, uh, overblown way. So the, also connected with Pluto here, the determination to press through and not be deterred by the threat of death. This is kind of Trump's uh, approach is just, let's just power through and death is death and, you know, death happens or, you know, whatever his expressions are about it. So kind of a, the, maybe the ruthless side of Pluto was, is, would be how the liberals would see that, liberal people and most educated people. Perinatal themes engaged by the Trump presidency and election. Oh, get ready, uh, put your seatbelts on here. Feelings of apocalyptic danger, activation of aggressive feelings, escalation of the culture wars. And this has been, by all accounts, an intense pressure test of the U.S. constitutional system. A major death rebirth struggle when, you know, it really, it, everything is on the line. You know, uh, Trump's attempts to circumvent the will of, of the American people and basically steal the election um, uh, is really a coup. And, and if something like that happened, it would be the end of the United States as we know it. From a liberal perspective, Trump's rhetoric giving permission for people to act out their shadow feelings, their racist projections, urges to confine and punish others, lock her up. Uh, with Saturn, we tend to identify mainly with victims or rather with BPM2 experiences. With, in BPM3, people can, when they're experiencing that in their sessions, they can identify emotionally both with victims and perpetrators. And so there's this kind of activated Pluto now and this desire to be the punishing force, to turn the tables instead of just being the victim, but to be the actual uh, doer, the perpetrator, to do do it to other people, you know, to, to be the one that does the confining, the judging, the punishing, separating children from their parents and putting them in cages. Uh, from Again, from a conservative perspective, fear of too rapid change, uh, permission to express aggressive feelings. Trump has given people permission to, to let it out, you know, and, and they don't want that to end. It feels good for people to have a kind of a an enemy that they think they can justifiably aim their aggression at, you know, the Mexicans or, or the liberals or whatever. So some cartoons, uh, love that, either tweet or nuke, haven't decided yet that moment. Here's Trump as a kind of a baby man, just pounding on Obama with his birther, um, you know, conspiracy. Now, sadomasochistic themes also connected with BPM3. From a liberal perspective, members of the uh, Republican Party are prostituting themselves for short-term gain. And here's a great cartoon. Um, I just had the worst nightmare. And also the sadistic cruelty and acts of police brutality. I can't breathe. This famous, I mean, these paradigmatic cry crying out of 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 uh, 
African-American victims of police brutality really connects it with that primal trauma of the birth process. It's, it's like a, you know, where the collective psyche is in a state of suffocation in this death rebirth uh, period. Now, from a far-right conspiracy perspective, uh, Erica mentioned QAnon. Um, thanks for bringing that up. They, they see the Democratic Party as a cabal of Satan-worshipping pedophiles running a global child sex trafficking ring and plotting against President Donald Trump, who is the hero fighting the cabal. Now, um, it's very plausible that while there are undoubtedly uh, financial and political motivations of the leaders of, of those conspiracies, many of the, the followers are influenced by this memory of BPM3, as we saw. Here is a situation in which a helpless young person is assaulted by an overwhelmingly powerful force in an atmosphere of tremendous fear and dark demonic energies, it's something like a witch's Sabbath or a, a sort of a satanic uh, orgy atmosphere is part of the BPM3 complex that Groff observed in his clients when they were in these uh, uh, therapeutic sessions. And it's very possible that people, because they have that in their psyches, can be manipulated into believing that it's actually happening in the outer world. And this doesn't mean to say that, that it never happens in the outer world. I think there, there is probably some, you know, ritual satanic abuse at certain times and places in the human social underworld, but certainly not on the scale that these conspiracy theories are uh, alleging. Now, demonic themes. Uh, Rick talks about tendencies towards splitting and othering during Saturn-Pluto world transits, projection of one's shadow material onto other people. From a liberal perspective, and you know, most of us in this webinar would probably not see these as projections, but as actual uh, truth, you know, moral failure of many Republican leaders and not condemning the totalitarian behavior of the outgoing president in his attempts to overturn the results of the election. Trump as a self-serving demagogue on a dangerous power trip attempted coup, this sort of demonic energy it would be how progressive people would see his behavior. It's a great cartoon, uh, it, you know, not really the most admirable savior. You know, here he, Mary Magdalene's a 10. He's talking about another thing, you know, don't shelter the homeless. Uh, from a conservative perspective, uh, these demonic themes uh, manifest as their sense of this battle between good and evil, their sense that the liberal atheist agenda is trying to steal Christmas, Jesus, God, and you can see how hard they will fight to protect against that. People's spirituality is their most important thing in their lives, and to feel that that's under threat, you can understand why, the, you know, whether it is under threat rightly or wrongly, not to the degree they think, I, I'm sure, but why they would sort of react against that. Uh, allegations of a vast conspiracy involving Hugo Chavez, FBI, and the Department of Justice, Kamala Harris as monster and communist. I am your bulwark against Antifa. Trump says this sense of there's a there's evil forces and and tr I Trump am the uh, savior, uh, protector. And then again the issue of abortion, this wedge issue that costs so many elections for the progressive elements, the the many hundreds many hundreds of thousands of fetuses aborted each year in the United States. Uh, this. Many people will vote for the Republicans just on this this issue alone. Now, uh, now the scatological themes, and I apologize for going a little over time on this one. I just couldn't fit this into the seven minutes. Now, an almost universal perception of breakdown and corruption, whether you're on the left or the right or the center, this this is an alarming time with this sense of breakdown and corruption. From a liberal perspective, Trump's ongoing crass and repugnant comments, uh, trashing the democratic process, Giuliani's shady lawyering, oozing hair dye, uh, farting in court, this sort of fits into the general complex of Pluto that we're immersed in right now. David Axelrod of CNN said, uh, Trump is leaving the White House in a supernova of lies and corruption. He's really going for it, you know, Jupiter conjunct Pluto.
Um, and then his executive orders rescinding environmental protections, just incredible damaging and short-sighted actions, uh, permission to pollute the air, water, and soil that we all depend on. And thank you, Erica, for bringing up the, the, the apocalyptic catastrophe of the extinction of species. Um, this is a, a terrible thing that's happening, and we are really in the fight for our lives as a species right now. Now, scatological images, uh, the uh, Liberty going down the toilet from a recent cartoon. And then here he is draining the swamp, but it's going into the water supply. Um, from a conservative perspective, Washington as a fetid swamp, uh, huge dumps of votes. This is more of a, just a sort of a, uh, word play, you know, connection with scatology, but his image of Washington as a fetid swamp, and he's somehow going to uh, drain that swamp. Uh, a very effective cartoon from the right wing point of view, showing him as, as draining all of that scatology out of the psyche. Of course, it, while it exists in the outer world, the, the main difference we can make is to clear the, that material out of our own psyches by facing it in sessions. If we remember this image of the onset of birth depicted as a descent into a whirlpool, then we could perhaps see, as Erica kind of alluded to in some way, Trump here as an, as an unwitting agent of the dark mother or Kali, who is overseeing a kind of forced death rebirth process of the progressive elements in society over the last four years. You know, this, this sort of puncturing of our idealism that you know uh, four years ago and faith in and so on and then this amazing period of, of confrontation and self introspection and then finally pyrocathartic themes from a liberal perspective the outgoing president attempting to burn down the system in spite a scorched earth policy from a conservative perspective, out of control acts of arson during the anti-police brutality marches, th these kind of, this kind of arson, you know, really does fuel a reaction on the other side. It doesn't help the cause as opposed to peaceful, you know, non-violent protests. Trump as a great purifier, and, and this would be related to pyrocatharsis, that Trump is melting away this sort of liberal, uh, uh, opposition. On the positive side, in this last period especially, it's been a tremendous acknowledgement that there is a lot of unhealed shadow material in the collective psyche, an urgent need for more powerful inner uncovering processes. When you see how many people can be kind of mi misled by a demagogue like Trump, this is from my point of view, then you have to go, well, how are, you know, we're in deep shit if that's inside of people. And so the problem again comes down to psychology, uh, psychotherapy, self-exploration. Okay, I'm going to finish my slideshow by looking at Uranus and BPM4. The liberation from the threat of death and the decompression of space and reconnection with the mother and the divine are the essential elements of BPM4. Rick was able to make the correlation with Uranus. In, in archetypal astrology, we don't see Uranus as a marker of trauma, like in, in some other schools of astrology. I, I can see how people might have seen it that way because during Uranus transits, it's just hard for us to keep things bottled up. And that could be the moment when things break break out of it, you know, in, in not, the, not the easiest ways. But if we're pursuing deep self-exploration, then we come to really cherish and look forward to these transits because they always represent a, another opportunity for rebirth, for transcendence, for healing, uh, coming to a new level. So uh, a sense of opening and awakening, ecstatic feelings of rebirth, renewal, redemption, and forgiveness feelings of planetary citizenship and universal sisterhood and brotherhood. People have these experiences uh, connecting with celestial light, harmony of the spheres, uh, peacock feathers, a brilliant white or 
blinding light as people are reliving this these rebirth experiences the uh inside of giant halls and cathedrals that uh depict the opening and decompression of space as the infant exits the birth canal being held in the hands of the great mother goddess we can identify with the rebirth of persephone of christ of um Osiris, Dionysus, and other deities. We can feel a sense of reconnection with the Divine Mother in the form of Isis, uh, Demeter, Lakshmi, Mary, and other cultural uh, personifications of the Great Mother Goddess, or with God, or the Divine in a more abstract form. Several movies that really depict this BPM-4 feeling are Titanic. It's such a redemptive movie. This scene of sort of flying at the front of the ship was a blessed moment for the entire culture, a sense of transcendence, um, being liberated out of a, a constricting lifetime that she would have lived if she hadn't met him, and with the element of water involved in it. Um, the Truman Show... Um, also during the Uranus-Neptune conjunction, exiting the small microcosm into the more real world, exiting the Maya world into the, the realm of, the, of real human love. Um, and it's a, it is a cinematic depiction of this famous Flammarion engraving, um, leaving the, the everyday world and entering the world of the first causes or archetypes. And then one of my favorite gems uh, directed by jane campion holy smoke if you haven't seen this what a redemptive movie just incredible also wonderful sense of humor in this movie now perinatal themes engaged by the uh, covid 19 pandemic uh, look at uranus and bpm4 now the promise of blessed relief coming from the imminent vaccines um, you know when jupiter and uranus came within orb of that square um, this most recent past that we're in corresponded quite closely to the the, the um, announcements of the vaccines being close and it has changed the tone to one of we just have to get to that point you know but but uranus is in the picture from a liberal perspective the importance of following uh, medical science and facts i.e the promethean side of life over partisan emotionality and dangerous brainwashing to trusting science from a conservative perspective, uh, Trump was right about rounding the corner, I guess is how people would see that. Now, uh, the Trump presidency and the election and the Uranus archetype. From a liberal perspective, before the election, desperate yearnings for change and deliverance. I mean, we'll never forget the, just the feeling of importance of that election, um, you know, for the rest of our lives. And, uh, and then after the election, the decompression and release of pressure, successful survival of the democratic process. I mean, it's 99.99% .99 sure now he's still trying to stage a coup with the electors and, and Congress and so on. But I, I think it's very unlikely that that will happen. Many state officials, including Republicans, acknowledge for showing great integrity in withstanding pressure to overturn the legitimate results of the election. And as, as Rick Tarnas wrote to me recently, the moral center held a blessed moment and thank God for the moderate majority in society that, that can resist the bifurcation and the tendency to politicize everything. Uh, potential return to normalcy, decency, intrinsic human values of kindness, tolerance, respect, appreciation of diversity, again, Biden's ideals of healing and unity, uh, the Trumpist rebellion against normalcy and decency seen as a misplaced view of the way forward. That is not the, the way forward for humanity. Uh, and then Trump's natal son Uranus trying Jupiter, uh, lending itself to messianic projections and Midas touch inflation. He shares with Shatner, William Shatner, the great actor who played Captain Kirk, Sun conjunct Uranus. Shatner has square Jupiter, Trump trine Jupiter, and this sort of golden boy going beyond where no one has gone before, the sort of, you know, full of oneself and so on. Shatner in a, you know, very appealing way 
um, Trump from a liberal perspective, not so much with Trump. Now, dramatic breakthroughs in the area of civil rights and female empowerment in the election of Kamala Harris as vice president. What an incredible breakthrough for the civil rights movement, potential for an, and for the uh, feminist uh, movement for female empowerment. Uh, the potential for an urgently needed Green New Deal. This could happen. Uh, what a moment that will be if, if they win the, the Georgia primaries. And even if they don't, it, it will begin. From a conservative perspective, uh, many people have seen Trump as a messiah restoring the 1950s paradise or fantasy about a paradise or as leading people to the promised land. I mean, pe people actually see him that way. Attempted restoration of white privilege and male privilege. People have a desperate uh, need to overcome these memory imprints and the terrible fear of death within them. And so white privilege, male privilege are attempts to kind of bolster one's ego and gain some kind of power over nature, power over others, but it in no way solves this deeper problem of our mortality of these uh, traumas within us and actually gives us an opportunity to create negative karma if we have that kind of power. So it's understandable why people want to grab their privileges um, and run with them, but these things do not uh, solve the greater problems of life, the problem of death and the need to reconnect with the divine. So Trump as a rebel hero unbound by convention, a, a standard uh, line when people are interviewed at Trump rallies, rallies is we just can't take orders. There's, there's a highly activated Uranus right now, that Pluto Uranus. And, you know, he received the rebel vote in 2016. It, it could have just as easily gone to Bernie Sanders. People just wanted to rebel, you know. So that gives us hope that this is not just a kind of a dark energy is how liberals would see it um, that is going to continue. But it's, a lot of it is this Uranian uh, rebellion, uh, you know, um, desire for a change. Now, finally, an opportunity for people to freely express and be comfortable with their shadow, shadow emotions, especially anger and selfishness. Trump made it okay to be, you know, redneck, to, to be racist. He's like, he, he made fun of it. He made it like a fun thing for people to get in touch with those feelings. And, uh, you know, in very negative ways, in divisive ways in our society, uh, you know, one brief shining moment that was Trump a lot. Uh, that's a reference to Camelot, and that's how some people will look back probably at this this four year period. Now, the intolerable return to normalcy. Don't bottle us and our feelings back in. People are desperate to keep that wave going, to to feel their feelings and have that be okay. Their shadow emotions. Don't don't go back to the way to the normal everyday world, because then that just means they have to stuff those feelings back in. But there's a there's another way. There's a third way. And we people have talked about this Saturn Uranus tension between, you know, let's say in this case, repression and acting out. The third way is you can feel those feelings and express them in healing sessions in deep self exploration where you don't create karma. And that that really is the way forward here. I uh, this sort of manic determination to continue the fight, and reminiscent of Scarlett O'Hara, the Southern protagonist in Gone with the Wind. Tomorrow is another day, you know, like never give up. This is a kind of Uranian uh, inflection. And then just, you know, my comment to Trump supporters, I know this is a very painful time for people. There are even people in the new age that voted for Trump. Um, we do need a change. Something has to give. We just can't keep going like this. But the, my opinion is the way forward is deep self-exploration, not political extremism. Your feelings are legitimate and valid, but I feel that people have been misled and manipulated by, by a demagogue, and that is not the way forward. So I had an image of a Confederate flag while I was thinking about this presentation this week. And it was suddenly ripped open by a fast moving covered wagon stampeding toward a land rush. It's like it blasted through. And I, I felt that it was, you know, these fantasies, especially in the South 
about the lost pre-Civil War paradise, which really is a major underlying force in the culture war still. That is now being replaced with a new incentive, a new land rush, the opportunity for personal healing. Uh, many people have talked about this tonight. Overcoming the negative imprint of BPM2 and BPM3 and the fear of death and accessing divine consciousness. This is something we can all do. And, the, you know, it's part of the American psyche, this dream of incredible opportunity and, you know, fast moving pursuit of happiness, you know, life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. But in this land rush, this new land rush of, of healing, everyone can have oceanfront property. It's a variable sum activity. Your healing only benefits everyone else and it takes nothing away from anyone. The spirituality that emerges uh, is of a non-sectarian, non-denominational, universal and all-encompassing quality. It's not fundamentalist. It's not sectarian. These are very beneficial qualities in society for people to access the divine. It, it solves a lot of problems and, and a greater chance for them to be happy and, and, to want, and not to overcompensate with materialistic overconsumption and so on. Uh, deep deep self-exploration is a win-win pursuit. As I said, every healing breakthrough benefits everyone. And I want to conclude with this uh, amazing uh, observation by Rick um, at the Cycles and Symbols Conference in uh, February 1997 in San Francisco. Patriarchy is the 5,000 year birth canal of the great mother goddess. We're in a kind of collective birth labor as people have talked about tonight. And this is the, the most exciting part of it, right? Happening before our eyes right now. When he made that statement at the conference, he projected onto the screen this amazing uh, painting by uh, Karen Motan, sort of the birth of a new humanity, a more sustainable, and peaceful way of, of living on this earth. Thanks for this quality time. You've all been wonderful. It's wonderful to see the audiences. Thank audience. Thanks for those of you who have your cameras on. It's great to see so many friends. Hi, Carmen. Um, friends from Victoria, really great to see you. I'm most impressed by the quality of these presentations that you know makes me want to get into astrology. Hi, James. I didn't mention one, one correlation, which is that Trump's Jupiter is conjunct the U.S. chart Saturn. I, I discovered this a while back. Maybe someone else has seen it. Um, so it's like the moral center holding the checks and balances. The integrity of the, of the moderate majority has, has um, resisted his, what I see as, you know, megalomania inflation attempts to have it all, you know, forever. Um, so thank, thank goodness for that. My website is renbutler.com and I'm doing a um, year-long course starting in September and I do readings as well.